So you want to win quickly, right? Everybody wants to win quickly and hopefully in attacking style. Uh, and that's why we have gambits. The problem with gambits uh, are that you lose a pawn or, or even something more. But if they work, uh, they are usually a shortcut to get at the opponent's uh, king faster. And, uh, and I think everybody should experiment with gambits at some point in their career, just learning to, to, to go for dynamics and going for the attack and saying, okay, if the attack fails, uh, I'm just uh, down a pawn and I will lose the ending. Uh, here we have a game, it's, uh, it's kind of an old game, uh, which I played in 1995, and I was not a grandmaster then. Uh, and I meet uh, the legendary Helgi Olofsson, who, um, not the old Helgi Olofsson, but the, 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 the younger Helgi Olofsson, but also a very strong Olofsson. Um, oh, I think the other one is Frederick Olofsson, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, uh, he, he, he was 2600 at some point, and he, he, he is or still are a strong player. And it was in the Reykjavik Sonal Tournament in 1995, uh, and I'm white, and I go D4, and I didn't have that great openings back then, <laughs> probably don't have them either uh, right now either, but uh, I had studied some, some tricky lines, and one of them was the Trumpowski. And go 94, and uh, and I think maybe this line is actually one of uh, Black's better uh, ideas. And I had decided that if he, he was to go this way, I would play e4, and uh, I'm playing some sort of accelerated uh, Black Mar Dima gambit, where uh, the bishop is a little bit odd on f4, but uh, and I'm I'm giving up a, a good central pawn. But I will get attacking chances, and the Black Madima Gambit I think is is kind of popular on the, on on a not so high level, but it's, it's it is a very dangerous gambit, and it's it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure I would play it. Uh, I, I'm, I would not play this gambit again today, but but back then it was it was fun. Bishop d4, um, a3. And uh, this is normal. And he took here, and I think maybe bishop h5 is better. Uh, I think the best, one of the best lines for black is actually against the normal black Madima gambit is to play c6 and bishop d4, and just playing some sort of a caro can where it's just a pawn up. And even though the f file is open, it's it's not that dangerous. And uh, c6, and already here white has some some uh, interesting attacking uh, chances and this is uh, this is what you want when you play a gambit you want to be able to get all your pieces out into a, a aggressive uh, positions as fast as possible and try and attack and uh, well i got a lot of pieces out so i'm and uh, and that's usually a good idea when you castle queen side to to just Make sure the king is out of the way. H4, d5, d4, and b5. Uh, black is also he might be a pawn up, but he knows that we will have to play a middle game, so he better get something going as well. And here I think he should probably uh, take take here. That would have been uh, been safer than what he did, um, because after this knight comes here. And uh, we are already starting to, to feel the heat here and here. And uh, I have all these pieces bearing down on his uh, king side, so he should be careful. He played a5, and that was careful. And then I played rook df1, and I'm setting up a trap. And this is uh, typical, if you're going to win quickly, your opponent has to make a big mistake. This is a sim simple, simple logic that you cannot win unless he makes a big mistake. And here he did a, a very big mistake. White has a nasty threat in the position at the moment. And he have to. He simply had to play h6, I think, um, something like this. And of course, he can never take. Uh, but at least uh, he, he uh, uh, avoids the, the complete disaster that happens in the game. 
uh, I might play g4 or something. Uh, I, I had not completely decided what to do there. Um, I think white has great attacking chances, but it might not. I might not win the way I did in the game because here he played the big mistake a4. Of course, his plan is very simple to go a3, and and there will be uh, be trouble on the black squares uh, on on the queen side. The, there is the problem is just that white has a a way to uh, to cr to crash through the front door here with boom this move, and that looks like a mistake. But the problem, of course, is is after this, come to queen, attacking here. And uh, of course you cannot take here because white will take back with the with the h pawn and and uh, and uh, you will be made it in the h file and um, and there is now we see that the reason why white played this move this little devious uh, is because if he goes back here then we'll just take take and take. And there's a mate on h7. So after this move, uh, poor Olofsson uh, gave up. He resigned the game and uh, had won in just 20 moves against a strong grandmaster uh, with white. Uh, the day before, I had actually won against uh, um, Hannes Stefansson, the other one of the other strong Icelandic uh, grandmasters. So I had a great start and I almost won against the Peterson. So I was really having a good time against the Icelandic player, except for Hatasan, who was too strong for me. Uh, so Gambit can be a lot of fun. It is the way to win quickly, but you, it's also the way to lose slowly because you just lose the ending, which is, is what will probably happen just as often as you, you deliver mate in 20 moves like this. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, I cannot recommend this gambit. I don't think it's correct, uh, but it is fun. And for a Blitz game, it's, I'm sure it's, it will, will do fine. Uh, thank you for watching GM Talks, uh, this little light gambit edition, uh, and hope to see you soon.